Hey, Asnarder, the, produ the uh, practitioner here. Um, as you probably guessed, I've just watched your vid. <laughs> uh, sorry, um, lost my train of thought. Oh, right. Um, before I actually respond to your video, I wanted to say uh, thanks for the um, thanks for the message you sent me about um, my videos being uh, um, thought provoking and in depth. Um, I haven't had a <sighs> trust me. I know exactly where you're coming from uh, on the. Uh, unpredictability of on uh, the unpredictability of uh, what you put out on YouTube or what you put out in the world, because um, uh, sorry, I'm I digress. Um, yeah, it's been a little bit tough. Um, I know exactly where you're coming from in this, particularly because of the fact that it's been a little bit tough. Um, even just trying to get critical thinking um, out onto or well out in out into the world in general, and um, I. I learned what you were saying about um, trying to put out the correct energy the hard way. Um, one of my videos, which uh, started this off, where I, I was in this exact same situation, um, well, this is the one of the two areas of unpredictability. Um, I was making a video um, called, uh, uh, basically it was a, a video um, debunking stereotypes, racial stereotypes. Um, the guy in particular uh, was a vehement racist, and I had replied to him saying, listen, um, black jokes are not appropriate because they perpetuate stereotypes which are, you know, and I listed off a whole list of critical thinking fallacies. Rather than being offended by it, I tried to uh, provide a logical context for why it was wrong, or at least attempted to. Um, anyway, what I got back in reply, I mean, I expected a little bit of a rebuttal or, or, you know, or a little something. What I got back, and what I'm still getting back on every single one of my videos is, um, Postings over and over and over again, except for like the odd two or three critically thinking uh, comments, um, the bulk of it is attacks on my character, attacks on my videos, and um, uh, people yelling white power and the like. You know, it's sort of like I I tried to just, you know, I, I was basically trying to stop a uh, perpetuation of something that could be harmful to a few people, and, you know, like just, just trying to, you know, just trying to point out something, you know, just by a little bit of logic. And the next thing I know, um, I've inadvertently uh, opened up. Uh, I've inadvertently stepped on an ant hill and literally brought out a whole bunch of people who were replying. Uh, then I made a reply to my video, and the then I made a reply to my own video, and then the guy who uh, I made a reply to my reply, and then the guy who um, then the guy who uh, who had originally wrote the video did a video reply calling me a flamer, and then I ended up stooping to his level, um, and I ended up uh, replying with something that I regret. I don't want to go back anyway. I, Let's just say lesson learned on that one. And the same, uh, a similar thing happened, at least for the first bit, um, after I did a video called Spoon Bending Explained, which was to debunk the um, uh, the idea of telekinetic spoon bending. You know, when people, uh, like Yuri Geller. Um, anyway, there was this, uh, I was debunking a particular person's video on uh, YouTube who was claiming that this was a telekinetic ability and or something like that, and was basically charging for, uh, charging uh, workshops about four to 500 bucks to get people to come train with this. So. I needless to say had to explain the physics behind it, and, um, and well, anyway, some of the people, um, you know, nowadays I'm just getting comments of, oh, well, you were only been able to bend the spoon once, they bend it six times, do it the, time, the same time as them, and then I'll believe you. But, you know, I mean, I just happen to be a weaker guy than my, due to my Asperger's, but, you know, I can handle those type of, uh, I can handle those type of straw men, I know how to handle that. What I don't know how to handle, and th this is what I found is that at least for the for a large chunk of the comments for the first bit after I made that video, was that I get the odd skeptic, but often what I got was I got a lot of people who believed, who were go like you're a liar, you're a fraud, you're a... like they they literally they just start attacking my character and um, this is this is how these are the two videos which have had my most replies and the bulk of the v replies on both of these videos has been um, how shall we say less than. Um, you know, I'm not offended by it, but it's just, I find it a little odd to say the least. And, um, yeah, you know, I think, I think you're right, basically, is that, um, you know, when you, when you said earlier to be concise, um, you know, to be concise and, and, and uh, you know, try to avoid using large words and try to, you know, appeal to the, the inner rational voice of people as opposed to using big words and putting it over their heads. I guess I guess this is the bit which has confused me the most, and I, I agree with you about I, I agree with you wholeheartedly about trying to you know uh, uh, appeal to the common touch. But this is the thing which has always bugged me, and perhaps maybe um, you could post a video reply to this, or leave a comment, or drop me a message to help me get this clarified because this is um, something that's always bugged me. Um, how do you do it in such a way that you can appeal to 
how do you do it in such a way that you can appeal to something that people on an everyday basis can relate to, but without, um, but without in the process um, doing it in such a way that they end up twisting the analogy and saying, well, uh, you know, and, and literally taking it like the analogy, the, the you know, like that they take uh, that the uh, that the analogy uh, that the that the um, the everyday event that you're using as an analogy and the thing you're trying to explain are automatically literally similar. Um, and the reason I've been asking this is because, um, you know, I've had a lot of trouble where, um, for example, um, let's take the whole global warming issue. Um, I did the video on this a while back. Uh, I mentioned this in my previous video too uh, because it was one of the best examples. Um, Al Gore, in his uh, video on global warming, uh, tried to use um, that analogy out of uh, um, Futurama and uh, tried to give a very basic explanation of, you know, the, about, you know, well, the CO2 is risen and the temperature is risen, so, you know, we've got a pretty good example here of what's going on. And then, um, you know, th this is like, you know, this is pretty big. Like, he tried to explain on a level that we could understand. You know, the two are, you know, the two are synonymous and therefore one was more likely to be causing the other. Well, what happened was, was that global warming skeptics, instead of actually uh, taking a look at the actual mathematics, which was, you know, the, 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 the complicated stuff, the, uh, the academic-based stuff, which, tried to, which Al Gore tried to simplify in this analogy, instead what they did was that they just simply seized on that as saying that that was the entire argument to global warming and uh, tried to debunk our influence on the environment based on the idea of, uh, uh, by citing the fallacy of confusing correlation with causation, when in fact there, you know, again, there was more to it than that, um, that Al Gore just simply hadn't put in, you know, except by mentioning that uh, carbon dioxide absorbed infrared radiation, uh, sorry, uh, absorbed, so, um, you know, certain wavelengths, um, because he was trying to keep it on a simple level for people, uh, you know, for the everyday person. And the point is that, you know, um, there's still a large movement, um, or at least there was when I made that video on YouTube, who were um, having trouble understanding that, uh, you know, like a large amount of skeptical movement who kept trying to debunk the science and what have you. I originally posted it in a simplified version in comments before I did the video, and they uh, they just simply, uh, they, they tried to twist it, saying, you're only espousing known chemical laws. There's no pr proof or connection to global warming. So I did a, uh, a rather large and complicated video, um, my global warming look at the science behind it video, just to make sure there was enough information available. So this way, the um, both the skeptics and the believers would have a, um, you know, or the proponents of global of anthropo of us influencing global warming, um, would have um, would have a uh, a wide database of information to access to get a better picture of what's actually going on. And on issues like this, then we can act, and and from getting that better picture, then people can more intelligently vote on issues like, okay, do we actually need a carbon credit, or should we should we be working on, uh, you know, trying to um, push for R and D on technology to help us adapt to the uh, global warming events? Like, you, you see what I mean? Like that some of these issues are so complicated that you have to bring out the info, but at the same time, how do you keep it simple so this way people aren't turned off by academia? Um, and you know, maybe you can answer that one for me because I've been having trouble trying to balance the two. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really, like I said, it's, I've discovered that this is a particular problem. Um, anyway, in my next video, um, I'm going to do another video reply to this one um, on the bit about, um, you said about putting energy out there and not really predicting even our slightest actions. And uh, I did have some thoughts on that, which, again, I, I wanted uh, your feedback on because, um, uh, you know, again, they're still kind of perplexing me. And, um, yeah. Like I said, I'll just post them in the next video. And um, in the meantime, uh, I enjoyed the vid. I'll be looking forward to your comments on evolution.